Once upon an editorial, I implied that reviews of railway-related media would be feasible at some stage. But despite many films and TV shows receiving coverage, books have been left sitting on the shelves. The reason being that YouTube being a place specifically for videos, I couldn't really come up with a suitable video format for them. But given the trend that people sometimes tend to treat YouTube videos as background noise and not really pay attention to the visual aspect so much, I thought I'd try out an adaptation of Gauge the Issue minus the visual element specifically for railway-related books. Be they fiction, non-fiction, plausible or not, if it's related to trains in a big way, chances are it could be covered here. I appreciate some people may not like this idea very much, but we can only give it a try and see how it goes. So, pitch over, and welcome to the first edition of Rail Reads. In 1980, the BBC aired the critically acclaimed God's Wonderful Railway, an eight-part series chronologically dramatising the history of one family working down the generations on the Seven Valley Railway. Soon after the show's success, the BBC commissioned and paid for GWR's writer Avril Rowlands to write a follow-up railway-based period drama for primetime television. Unfortunately, changes in channel control resulted in said follow-up being dropped in favour of the long-running soap EastEnders. What a great decision that was. For nearly four decades afterwards, Roland sat on the story while working on other projects until putting out a follow-up of sorts in book form in 2021. Steam in the Family takes place in 1935 during the Art Deco age of railway interest. Set in a fictional Midlands community served both by the Great Western and London and Northeastern Railways, the story centres around a family who's worked on the GWR for three generations but may be set to break the mould. 15-year-old Tom seems to have been living a lie his whole life for the sake of maintaining the relationship with his father Fred, a well-respected engine driver of the GWR's old guard. Living by the assumption that his son would end up following in his footsteps, single-minded Fred effectively manipulates young Tom to introversion. He pretends to be interested in a life on the railways when he's actually got no interest to begin with, and his facade doesn't just stop at his home life but at school where he's constantly locked in fights with rival railwayman's son Jim of initial l &E r faith. The handouts and callouts that he receives as a result of who his father is only adds to Tom's hesitation about his career. He's simply too unsure of himself to stand up to his father's immense personality or Jim's bullying nature. As the book states, he's no rebel and spends a lot of unwanted time in his father's shadow, though as he proves competent at his job, time may tell if the power of steam traction might be able to help Tom find himself. But Tom's world isn't the only one that's casting doubt over association with Fred and the GWR. His elder sister Sylvia succeeds in breaking away from home life working as a cinema usherette, determined not to marry into the traditional role of railwayman's wife. But her world becomes rocked in its own way when Fireman Di begins to court her. Initially resisting his forward advances, Sylvia is quick to find that she and Di share a mutual interest in cinema and poetry. And the more time they spend together, the more she warms round to Di's infectious Welsh aroma, albeit with Fred's strong disapproval. While Tom and Sylvia are the main focus of the story, Fred's character also fleshes out as the story proceeds. It's a slow burn that suddenly blazes as soon as Fred receives some news that risks his way of life at a time when everyone else is trying to move on with their own life. You suddenly end up feeling for him in a way that you wouldn't have suspected in the first two-thirds of the story, and the most refreshing thing about it is that it isn't the cliched old man forced into retirement trope. The character development is strong here, but the wider context of the setting highlights more of Roland's strengths in terms of world building and reality tying in with historical accuracy. It would have been easy to gloss over the history of railway development and practice in the story's town, Acton Chalcote, but not only does Rowlands mention locomotives by names and numbers stretching as far back as Dean's Queen Class 222s, and not only does she give a detailed explanation to the LNER's involvement in a fierce Great Western town, but said involvement ties in with the reality of the UK importing iron ore from Spain in the 1870s. And this is before we mention how life at a busy engine shed is portrayed. Gossip is powerful, secrets are impossible to keep, and the moment you speak up about personal issues, people take the mickey, as they often would in the rail industry. So when Tom asks Di how to build muscle in order to gain the strength he needs to sustain his efforts on the footplate, he's quick to regret speaking up. There are no illustrations accompanying the text. However, the descriptive nature of Roland's writing helps readers to paint a mental picture of the story. Rail fans in particular will understand the references without feeling spoken down to, which is ample credit considering Rowlands herself doesn't come from a railway background. 
While the book is marketed using its aforementioned predecessor, it manages to tell its own story without any obvious callbacks. The only criticism that anyone could have is that it perhaps pulls more punches than God's Wonderful Railway did. In conclusion, Steam in the Family may not have been the outcome that Rowlands initially intended, but nevertheless, transition of a follow-up to literature has ended up a pleasant, immersive, sometimes relatable surprise that reads like its television predecessor did over 40 years before, while remaining its own entity. If you liked God's Wonderful Railway, you can't miss this. Thanks for tuning in everybody. If you liked what you hear and you'd like to see more on the channel, then feel free to like, share, subscribe, discuss, contribute to my Patreon, and check out my range of merchandise at www.egmedia.co.uk forward slash shop. See you next time, 